Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Many of you have been giving me feedback about what you want to hear in these podcasts. And thanks to Sergi from Turkey for today's question. And the question is, how does English pub culture affect the world when English people go abroad? It's a very interesting question. And to answer that, I need to give you a bit of a background about English pubs. So basically, as you all know, the UK was very industrial. And when we were very industrial, we drank a lot more than we do today. We had to be strong people. We had to be physically strong. And we had to be able to be strong at work and also be strong outside, mentally strong to prove ourselves. And we had many, many pubs uh, where workers would stop to drink on the way home. Or, (laughs) in some cases, I'm sure, on the way to work as well. So we had scenarios where you might have a village of, let's say, 200 people, but you had 13 pubs. (laughs) It was a little bit crazy. These kinds of pubs are still around. Many of them survived. They're very small pubs, not with a lot of space, and they're only designed for people who are drinking. Now, these pubs in their early days, especially in the first half of the 20th century, did not allow women. So it would have been considered inappropriate for women to be in a pub. But ironically, many women worked and managed these pubs. It wasn't a female profession, but to have a female barmaid was considered to be very fashionable. Having said all of that, if your son or daughter decided that they wanted to work in a pub, you could expect fierce opposition. I remember as a child in England being offered a job to play the piano in one of the local pubs and my parents and grandparents were horrified the very idea that their son would play the piano in the local bar was considered completely inappropriate so I wasn't allowed to do that. Actually thinking about it My parents hated music generally and they refused to get me a piano at home. It was, uh, I think, many years later when I was an adult that I was able to have full access to music. So my point here is that uh, English pub culture has changed over the years. By the end of the 20th century and into the 21st century, Pubs have mainly transformed into family places, family restaurants, places where everyone can enjoy uh, a little bit of alcohol and some food. Although there are still pubs around which won't let children in uh, for various legal reasons. And there's others which separate families into separate areas just to ensure that children don't see bad things or don't access alcohol or have access to alcohol. Uh, When English people go abroad to other countries, we don't usually take the pub culture with us. I mean, we go to pubs, we certainly do drink, and I can remember when I was in Spain being in a supermarket trying to buy a gift for a Spanish friend of a bottle of whiskey and it looked like (laughs) I was some kind of alcoholic because uh, I asked to buy the bottle of whiskey and the cashier looked at me very strangely 
everyone in the queue behind me was staring as if to say, oh, British person and the alcohol. And uh, they had to go away, find a special set of keys, uh, come back, open a cabinet, bring it out, get manager's permission, uh, lock the cabinet, take the keys away again, uh, give me the alcohol. It, it was like I had committed some kind of major crime. By the time I got the alcohol, there was a really long, long queue behind me and people were obviously judging me. And I thought, oh, how very strange. Don't you people buy gifts for people <laughs> with alcohol? No? <laughs> and uh, it was a little bit odd. It was a little bit odd. I just wanted to wave my arms in the air and say, excuse me, this isn't for me. It's a gift, okay? In all of my travels, I've never seen an English pub anywhere. I'm sure there are English pubs abroad, such as in uh, America, for example, because they love English culture. But the Irish are much better at this than we are. They drink more. They have very specific drinks they like, such as Guinness, for example. I'm sure you all know Guinness. That's the black beer with the white head. It's considered to be a stout. And to tell you another quick story, I can remember my grandmother who didn't drink, was very strict with alcohol. She had some kind of tuberculosis or some kind of chest infection. And I remember my grandfather taking the poker from the fire, you know, the large piece of iron that we we usually um, push into the fire to move around the coal in the days when we had open fires, okay? So you would put the coal on and you would have like a metal stick and you would push it to move the coal around to get the fire burning. Well, I remember my grandfather, he had this metal stick for the fire. He would heat it in the fire and then he would put it in the glass of Guinness to make it warm for my grandmother because they thought that Guinness was good for your body. You know, they, they thought that it made you big and that made you well. You looked healthy if you were big. But all these ideas have completely gone. Anyway, my point is this. Uh, we English people don't really celebrate alcohol, but the Irish people do. And in every country around the world, in major cities, you will find Irish pubs. And if you go in, there will be Guinness, there will be Irish people working there, and you'll find the English people in there. If you're looking for English people, you will find them in your local pub <laughs> or else in an Irish-themed pub. We love that. It's what we do. Uh, it's the place where we meet. It's a very social place. But I must tell you, though, that uh, many people here now are choosing not to drink. So the pop culture is changing. It's not as black and white as it used to be. Uh, but as I'm sure you, you know from the media and from experience in your country, when younger people go abroad or go to other countries, they really, really do drink a lot and then unfortunately do some bad things. I think it's because of the way that we live. We we have this thing here where we should be working and obeying the law and therefore when we go to another country and we have freedom, we use that freedom in the only way that we know how. It's very sad, but that's how it is. Irish people, on the other hand, uh, have a much more open and tolerant attitude towards alcohol. Uh, they drink more than we do, but they consider it just a friendly big part of Irish culture, whereas in English culture, it's more about escapism and trying to get away from the bad day that you had. That's the way I see it anyway. Uh, so it's unlikely you have an English pub close to you, but if you do, let me know. 
uh, but certainly you'll have seen Irish pubs. In the English-speaking world, they are the experts with alcohol. It's so much part of their culture. It's ingrained into their culture. And in many ways, that's where we get it from. In the 19th century, many, many Irish workers came here. People like myself have Irish grandmothers. Uh, so it's very, very common for us to be uh, involved with Irish families. So, just to answer your question, Sagi, English pubs don't affect English culture around the world. Alcohol does generally, but if you're looking to meet English people, just go to your local Irish pub. <laughs> That's where you'll find all of us, I think. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, Sergi, I have many other questions from you, so I'll be using those in the next few days as well. So thank you. And if any of you do have feedback or questions about these uh, podcasts, please just send me a message. Thank you so much. Bye.